here's this week's project. Yeah, it's a container, but come on, how beautiful is this container? The lid is printed with Matter Hacker's wood PLA, and the bottom is printed with this beautiful matte sky blue PLA from Overture. The white inlay Greek pattern is white PLA, but I don't know what brand this one is. It's just some generic PLA I had lying around. The technique I wanted to explore with this project was printing a circular inlay pattern that wraps fully around the cylinder and simply snaps into place. I want to devote the next few videos to this design because although it may look like a simple container, there are quite a few interesting design techniques I want to show. Now for my Patreon supporters, I've gone ahead and uploaded the full 40 minute step-by-step -step tutorial along with the Fusion 360 file. If you enjoy my tutorials and find them helpful, please consider becoming a Patreon supporter as it allows me to create more videos for you, plus you get some bonus benefits. Also, if you'd like a more structured approach to learning Fusion 360, check out my Fusion 360 quick start course linked below. Okay, back to the beautiful container. I'm going to separate this project into two videos. In this one, I'll go over creating the circular inlay and how to create a perfect wrap around a cylindrical object. In video two, I'll discuss my technique for isolating the pattern and preparing it for 3D printing and the techniques I used to design my own supports in Fusion 360 that allowed me to go from this To this. I didn't begin this project with the inlay approach in mind. Like most of my projects, it kind of evolved into that. I first intended to print everything as one piece and simply paint it. Because I had added chamfers to the wraparound pattern, it made it hard to paint in the lines. Also, the fact that I'm not a great painter and can be a little impatient compounded the problem. I decided I would just overpaint and then come back and clean up the paint later. Well, this didn't work exactly as planned and uh, we won't talk about this anymore. So I decided instead of printing the container and key pattern as one piece, I would print the key pattern separately and simply glue it into place. Something like this. And then I decided I would add a chamfer to the bottom that would align and hold the key pattern at its proper height and inlay the top ring. Then I thought, well, why not just make the key pattern as an inlay? This introduced new issues I would have to solve, such as printing this circular pattern with one extruder without having to deal with the nightmare of removing and cleaning up a mess of supports. I'll save that part for my next video, and in this video, I want to show how I approach the wraparound Greek key pattern. All right, let's begin with my approach to designing this Greek key pattern. First, I'll begin by explaining a quick concept, and then we'll jump into the design. So here, I've got a cylinder, and in front of that cylinder, I've created a sketch, and on that sketch, I've created this rectangle. Now, if I open up that sketch, you'll see that I've constrained it in certain ways, but I haven't fully constrained it. So I've given it a height from the bottom here, I've given it a height of the rectangle, but I didn't constrain the length. Uh, and you can see that that's 140 millimeters. All right, so because I didn't constrain it, you see that it's blue instead of black here. And I also can just click this and drag it to make it wider. I'm gonna leave that open for a reason, or I should say unconstrained for a reason. So I'll finish this sketch. And I can now go ahead and uh, let's create an emboss. We're gonna emboss this rectangle onto that cylinder by going to create down to emboss. We'll select our rectangle here and then for our face, we'll select our cylinder. And it takes that sketch here, that rectangle and creates an emboss on the cylinder. And we know that's a perfect emboss, you know, because if I click here, Again, that's 140 millimeters, and if I click on the inside of this edge here, actually it gives it to me in radius form, but if I go to inspect and then click on it, it now gives me what that length is, 140 millimeters. So that tells me that that's the exact length of this rectangle, so we have a perfect emboss there. Now I can go ahead and take this rectangle and just drag it out, and notice how the 
uh, length of that emboss will grow. It's going to continue to match whatever the length of my rectangle is here. And that will continue happening until I exceed the length of the circle, that circumference. So again, if you select it, you'll get it in diameter form here. But if I go to inspect and then select it, you'll get that circumference It's here as length. So the diameter was 100 millimeter, which makes our length 314.159 millimeters. And currently our rectangle is at 269. So I can continue like slowly tweaking it to try to get it as close as I can to meet. And the issue here is if I go over, like if I take this and I drag it way out, it no longer refreshes. In fact, it'll give me like a quick warning here because this now exceeds 314 and it can't overlap itself. And the way to bring it back is I have to bring it back again below 314. Um, and then, so that's still too high, bring it low. And then it'll continue to be dynamic and, and respond to the emboss. And so, it, you know, I can try to like really try to nudge this in to get it as close as I can. And if I go over, bring it back. But that's really a silly way to approach this. We can simply go ahead and define this to equal the circumference of our circle here and that should get it to give us a perfect wrap so what i can do is go back to that sketch and say all right let me just add a dimension here just put it up here and do 314.159 enter now if i click finish sketch that's going to give me that perfect emboss okay wanted to establish that and now we'll jump in and create our greek pattern key to revolve around our cylinder all right i'll begin this design by first let's create our cylinder and i'll go through this really quick because a lot of this is, is quite straightforward so i just created a sketch on my xy plane i'm going to start with a cylinder here right on the origin i'm going to start by giving it again a radius of uh, 100 i'm sorry a diameter of 100 millimeters and then i'll finish that sketch let me extrude this up we'll go up 110 millimeters Let's create that uh, offset plane here. I'm just gonna grab that center plane, drag it out. Let's go, let's say negative 70 millimeter, sounds good, just to put me right in front of it. And then I'll create a sketch right on that plane I just created, and we're gonna zoom in. All right, now I'm gonna project the outline of my cylinder by hitting P. And I'll simply um, click the specified entities, click on it, click OK. And now I can remove my uh, or untoggle the visibility of my bodies here, and I'll get that top and uh, top and bottom line showing me the edge of my cylinder. All right, here's the approach I'm going to take to create the Greek pattern. So it's important here, actually, which makes it a lot easier to follow this, is if you um, just use your grid spacing here to your advantage. So um, you want to make sure it matches mine. So if you go here to your grid settings. Uh, click here on grid settings and then uh, as far as um, the two options here you have adaptive and fixed check fixed and then go ahead and change your major grid spacing to 10 minor subdivision to 1 and click OK all right now each of these um, blocks here the grid is 10 millimeters and so the way I approach this is I went up I'm gonna go up six blocks here um, to start my sketch. So one, two, three, four, five, six, right here. Um, I just, you know, determined that's starting it there is going to center it right in the uh, middle between the top and bottom lines. And that way we don't have to worry about moving it into place later. All right, so I'll grab my line tool here from the create menu or simply hit L. And I lost my place. Two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to start here. I'm going to go down one. So um, just a uh, way you can make this pattern is you increase the number of grid spacings by one each time so down one right two up three left four and then down five and then we're gonna go to the right another five and then so that will end just uh, one grid spacing from this edge here click that check mark and then we're gonna do the same thing on the inside right here so one two three four gonna end on four there and then we're gonna close the ends here and also this one here and then we have our key pattern okay so 
the approach I took here, um, if I see, uh, if I click on this line here, we can see that that's 50 millimeters, right? Let me finish this sketch for a second, bring in the body back into view. Now this length here, uh, or our circumference is 314, right? So if we want to get this to wrap around the circumference here, right? Like the total length here has to equal this circumference here. So, you know, one way we could do that is if I go back to the sketch, we can create a rectangular pattern of this and get it to equal 314. So let's say we'll just do that for a second and then I'll uh, come back and show a different way. So let me create a pattern here. So a rectangular pattern. I'm going to double click to select this chain. My direction, I'll click this bottom edge here to set the direction and I can start dragging this arrow across actually. I know that that's the length there is 50 millimeters so I can change the distance type to spacing. Go ahead and type 50 for distance. And I know since this is um, 50 millimeters long, if I make six of these, it's going to get me close, right? It'll get me to 300 millimeters. Um, change spacing or distance here back to 50 instead of 80. Okay, and now I have that. Um, I can finish that sketch. And this will be, I can do a quick inspect here to verify between this edge and this edge, 300 millimeters. So I know that this is 314, the circumference, so it's not going to give me a full wrap, right? So I can go to create, um, I can go to emboss, select each one of these, and then select my face, and then I'll have this. And so we can see it's looking looking good, but then we've got that spacing there, right? Because we're about uh, roughly 14 millimeters shy. So, you know, a few options we can go there. We can come here and make sure to change this um, so that the full length equals exactly that circumference. In this case, it's going to be easier to change that circumference to match the 300 here. So let's do that instead finish sketch, go back to that first sketch where I have my circumference there. All right, here we're going to have to go back to some old uh, algebra days, right? So the circle wants to be defined in terms of a diameter. And we know that the circumference of a circle equals diameter times pi. So we can solve for diameter because we know that diameter equals circumference divided by pi. So in that case, if we know we want the circumference to be 300 millimeters, we'll just go ahead and type that formula in. So that would be 300 divided by pi. And you have to be, um, actually I'll show you, you can type 3.14 if you want. But you know, if you want to be more precise, just go ahead and type pi and that'll uh, give you a lot more uh, significant figures there. So uh, to type pi, you're going to have to do capital P and I. Small p and small i will not work here. So you'll need to make sure that uh, you have capital P and capital I. We'll hit enter and now we'll get our diameter that we need to give us that circumference, which is 95.493. Click finish sketch. And we can see here that uh, well, our uh, circumference definitely changed, but it didn't update our uh, emboss here. And this is, there's actually an, an issue here. And it's, it's a rounding issue is what it turns out to be. Um, so because we entered pi there, and if I go back to the sketch here, you know, this distance here is 300, which should equal exactly the 300 of the uh, circumference there. Um, but I'll show you why I think it's a rounding issue. If I click finish sketch, I go back to that first um, sketch here where I defined this. If I go back to the dimension here, basically what it comes down to is that this circumference has to be uh, exactly the same size or uh, slightly bigger than the length of my emboss. Otherwise, this will not work. So what I'm going to do here is uh, go ahead and add 0.001 and watch how that fixes it. If I click finish sketch here, perfect, no more error, and I get a perfect emboss. Okay, now that I've shown you that, I'm going to show you um, another way, which I think is, is a, probably a better way to approach this. Notice also you have that little seam there. Um, it's not really going to, it's not much of an issue. Actually, it won't even show when you 3D print it. Um, but notice this next approach I'm going to show, actually, you won't even see that seam. 
So, all right, I'm gonna undo until uh, before I created this pattern here of the, uh, the sketch. So I'm just gonna keep hitting undo until I go back to one pattern here. Okay, a better approach I found to do this is to um, go ahead and just emboss one instance here. So if I go to create down to emboss, select this and emboss it onto my surface here, I've got one, and now if I create a revolve of this, um, it'll actually work better. So let me first go ahead and um, come back to this first sketch. I ended up undoing that part, so I have to redefine this. Uh, 300 divided by pi gives me the right circumference I need. And now I can go to create, down to pattern, do a circular pattern. Uh, type, I'm going to do features, select my emboss, and then the axis of rotation, I can go ahead and select the bottom edge of that circle there, and I will enter six of these for my quantity, hit enter, and now you can see how it worked perfectly, and I didn't have to worry about the whole rounding issue here by adding, you know, 0 0.001 to that circumference. Um, so that ended up working a lot better, and I don't even get a seam in here, so uh, it just does a perfect uh, emboss there. Okay, and you can see, you know, definitely uh, if you wanted to approach this with user parameters, you can put all your formulas here and make it so that this entire thing is uh, fully parametric. You can even go the full route and make, uh, for example, this sketch here so that this pattern can fully change with the circumference of your cylinder, um, a little more involved, but you could definitely do that. Okay, I'll end it here um, because I don't wanna um, have this video go too long, but basically I just wanted to show the approach I took here to create that perfect emboss around a cylinder. And in the next video, I'll talk about how I then got to this part here, which I got that pattern to be an inlay uh, inside the model here. And some techniques I um, approached here to get this to print. Um, so you can see I've added some chamfers here to the cylinder, which allows this part here to actually print without supports. So I wanna talk a little bit about that technique in my next video, and also talk about um, printing this shape here. Because you can see this would be a nightmare to print if you're just using one extruder, for example. I mean, if you've got like the multi-material unit where you can, um, or multiple heads on your printer where you can print your supports in a different material or you can print two colors at once, you know, you can get away with printing that. But uh, a lot of us just have a single printer with one extruder, so we have to kind of get creative in how we um, model uh, our designs. And so I really wanted to approach this with a way that, you know, didn't have to generate supports within the slicer so that they're easily removed. And I want to show the technique I took there to print this and get it to fit exactly on this cylinder. And of course, I have the lid here, which also got to fit perfectly on the container. But I'll save those for next video um, here. I just wanted to keep this straightforward to one topic. And again, I have the entire, I think it turned out to be like a full 40 minute tutorial on my Patreon page. So my Patreon subscribers, uh, you have access to that plus the Fusion 360 file for this design here. Um, also, can you guys see how, um, I'm sure I'm gonna get this question, but you can see there's a little gap. Sorry, this, I'm just trying to get in this line. Little gap there between, you know, the inlay and the container for my, uh, in order for this to fit. But I'll talk about that in the next video. Okay, yeah, so uh, Patreon subscribers, you already have access to the full uh, tutorial on my page. And if you're not yet a Patreon supporter and you enjoy my tutorials and find them helpful, uh, consider supporting my channel. It really helps me in uh, taking the time uh, off to create these videos for you. Uh, and you also get some bonuses uh, on my page, which I've linked below. Uh, also, I do have a quick start course and uh, more advanced courses in Fusion 360 for those of you looking for a more structured approach to learning Fusion 360. So um, check that out as well. I've got the links below. Along with my Fusion 360 constraints cheat sheet. So I know, throwing a lot at you, but a lot of good resources down below in the uh, description. You'll see the links. Uh, all right, guys, leave any questions uh, you have for me below, and uh, I'll look at them and maybe address them in the uh, next video. 
but stay tuned for that one. Uh, I'll be back soon. See you in a bit.